All right, uh, welcome to Front and First, everyone. And um, we are kind of continuing our series this week. We've been talking about some advanced React component patterns. We talked about recursive components. We talked about um, unstyled components. And today we're gonna be talking about controlled and uncontrolled components. So um, this is a fun topic. There's a lot more here than you might first think. So yeah, I think we've got a nice little story to tell here and we can try to break down what a controlled component is, what an uncontrolled component is, why you'd wanna use it, when it comes up. And then we're gonna end talking about this demo, this cool demo we've been working on, a little clone of like the iOS Reminders app with some draggable interactions and how it, how it complements this idea of controlled components, how it works with something like Use Optimistic from React 19. So there's a lot of ideas that come together uh, under this topic. So um, yeah, what do you think, that sounds good? Yeah, yeah, very cool. The, awesome. I guess the reason we started exploring this was uh, this is going to be a, a topic in our course, our upcoming course, uh, Advanced React Component Patterns. We're going to deep dive on these uh, controlled, uncontrolled components. And uh, we're gonna, this is like the podcast version of that. Mm -hmm. but, yep. um, if you're new to React or you've never heard of controlled, uncontrolled components, uh, I have great news because you have absolutely used a component that is both controlled and uncontrolled. And that is uh, whenever you render an input. So if you're working on a form and you render an input in React, that component, that that input tag uh, can be in both a controlled state and an uncontrolled state. Uh, so do you want to break down sort of, let's talk about, uh, what should we do first, the uncontrolled version of input? Yeah, let's talk about what those terms even mean. And maybe we can start with um, a simple like counter component in React, which is just gonna be a, a stateful component. This would also be true of kind of any other framework, but this is the same idea where you have a button that increases some state and it renders the current state of the counter. So one, two, three, four, you press plus and it goes up. That is a component that is controlled. And the reason it's controlled is because um, the state is in React, everything in the component that you're looking at, um, it's like UI as a function of state is, is purely what's happening here. Now, if you think about it, the in, most interesting way to introduce the idea of an uncontrolled component is to realize that there's actually state in this counter that is not part of React. For example, if you were to select and highlight part of the text in the count, that's browser state, right? That's like state that is in your browser. React doesn't know, you haven't written any code anywhere that says when I drag a mouse like this to highlight these characters. Um, and yet that's what happens. So this is kind of like my first way to think about controlled and uncontrolled. The fact that there's state that we control in this particular component, but then sometimes there's also like browser state or state that lives outside this component that nevertheless has an effect on the UI. And, um, the jump from there to an input, uh, I think is pretty easy to understand. If you drop an input tag, just render an HTML input tag in a React app um, without any state, without any on change handler, with no value, nothing, just an input tag, there's a lot of behavior that that input tag has. You can start typing into it and you're gonna see the characters that you type show up in the text box. I mean, that's what a text box is. What else would it be? Why, why else would it exist if it didn't do that? Um, but that is actually an uncontrolled component because you are typing, the browser is updating it, but React has no idea. Yeah, and React can use that component because you can put that component in a form, wire up an on submit handler or an action, and you can read the value of that input. So even though React has no idea of um, the fact that you're like you're typing and it's not doing re-renders as you type, uh, you can still like that component that that input tag is still totally usable in a React app. Um, exactly. So so these components are, yeah, they're really powerful. You're just kind of um, you're defaulting to uh, the browser behavior, and then you just you get to use the components when components is not a good word here. I, I think it's so you get to use like the HTML tags. I, I don't know right. if there's a better uh, way. Uh, well, well, this is kind of where the next level comes in because we've been talking about things like. Um, state that lives in the DOM in the browser that's not anywhere in our React code. You won't open up any React component and find anything about on mouse down, set the highlighted text area from this to this. 
or if you just render an input text, an input tag, you won't find anything that says on key up, you know, set the state and update it. All those work. And so those are uncontrolled because they kind of have their own internal state. You know, when I first heard controlled and uncontrolled, it was like really confusing for me to to always get those terms right because they're just kind of like pretty abstract terms. Um, I think of uncontrolled as something that has like internal state. And as we'll see kind of in a, in a little bit, this notion applies to component boundaries as well. So it's not just about browser or DOM state that doesn't live in React. It's about where the state is in terms of a boundary. But just again, to start off simple, you have a simple React page. You're rendering tags from HTML that have some stateful behavior. That is like the essence of an uncontrolled component. So it has internal state. The internal state of the highlighting is which characters are highlighted. Uh, focus is another example, which element is focused. You know, browsers let you focus things. And so the browser has internal state that's not part of your React app. And so that is an, another example of uncontrolled behavior or an uncontrolled element or uncontrolled component. And then the input tag is kind of like the, the first really like complete example. And I think the reason it's a complete example is because the input tag in React can be completely controlled or completely uncontrolled. And you've probably seen this if you've used it before. If you render an input tag, you're good to go. You can type in it. Like Ryan said, like you said, it is uh, still useful to your app because again, there's a lot of default behavior that comes from the browser. If you submit a form, the browser knows how to serialize any of these inputs. And because they're stateful, it's gonna be able to get the values from them, again, without you writing any code. But you can also pass value and on change to them. And what happens if you pass a value to an input tag and nothing else? You get a good old uh, React error. You yes, get a, a exactly. React error that says uh, you're turning this, what does it say? It says something like you're turning this component into a controlled component uh, by passing it a value. You also need to pass in like an on change or a way to update that value. Exactly. So the first time you do this, especially like earlier in your React journey is very confusing. Um, the value is maybe some state, maybe it's just a variable and you're passing it in. And React is telling you, you made a mistake here. You made a mistake because you are using this input as a controlled input. The only reason you'd want to render an input is to let people change text. And so if you pass in a value, but no way to update that value with an on change handler, then what are you doing, dummy? Uh, and the, I think the warning even says, if you want this to be read only, you need to mark it as read only because that is a cool. use case for having it just be fixed. And, um, but then you wouldn't need it to be controlled in the first place. So. When you add a value and an on change, you're taking an uncontrolled input and making it controlled. And so again, how do you can, how can you remember this? Uncontrolled has internal state. Now you want to use that state somewhere. You want to run validation on it. You want to show it somewhere else on the page. You want to send it over in a JSON request somehow. And so you are taking control of the input. You are now taking control of it with your own state, your own logic and you are responsible for what it renders. That's what it means to go from an uncontrolled component to a controlled component. Yes, yep. I think you covered that really well. I, I don't have anything to add. Okay, cool. Well, I was gonna say, with so with the input, with the input tag, is there any, like when do you decide when you want it to be controlled versus uncontrolled? Right, so with all of the inputs, the text areas, uh, date pickers, all these things, you know, as we're seeing with like Remix and React 19 and Next um, server actions, we're leveraging form data now because it's just like, why would we turn all these things into controlled inputs, manage the state ourselves, send them over in a JSON if the browser already knows how to serialize a form full of inputs. So that's a great use case for using uncontrolled inputs. Um, all of the Radix and the Aria components as well, which we've been talking about have versions of their fancy radio groups and toggles that render uncontrolled inputs in the DOM as well. So you don't have to um, handle the state change with value and on change just to send it over. It will just have an uncontrolled um, version of that fancy date, uh, fancy date picker, the, the, the radio select that gets serialized. And so um, 
for a lot of cases, uncontrolled uh, components have have are, are very useful. The forms is the is the most obvious one. But what, when what you about want like, to opt into making them controlled is when you want to add some behavior or logic in a way that the default doesn't get you, or you want to pull the value basically out. So if uncontrolled components have internal state, the reason you want to make them controlled is for some reason you want to pull that value out and do something with it. For example, let's say you had a range slider. It's another type of HTML input. You can click and drag it. It has a value. It has a min and a max. And so you could put that in a form, keep all of that internal state just from rendering input type range and submit the form. But let's say you want to change the volume on your device every time you drag it. Well, now you want to listen to the event, you know, on change. You want to set the volume through some API. And then if that volume changes in any other way, you want the, the input range to reflect the current volume. So you're going to pass that in as value. So now you want it to be controlled. You're basically moving the source of truth from inside the component to outside the component. It's like you're hoisting that that state up and now you're responsible for it. Yeah. And when you're when you're talking about just these like vanilla HTML tags, it's often you're moving the state out of the browser into your React app. But that's not as we're going to uncover in this episode. There are other types of ways to control and uncontrol or other types of ways to think about it. But um, exactly. Yeah. Often I, I think of this, it's like when you want your when you want like some reactivity in your form like i want to check if the username is available on every single keystroke i don't right. want to have to wait for them to submit the form so at that point like i need react to know that the user is typing in so at that point we move from uncontrolled to controlled the uh the username gets its own state and um that gets passed into the input tag as long with like an on change or on key up whatever we want right. to do Right. Cool. Um, I think the next thing we can go to from here is a lot of times folks learn about controlled and uncontrolled, um, these ideas around things like form inputs. Um, but they really apply to almost every component. If you think about it, because really what we're talking about here is what's the source of truth for this component. Is it its internal state or is it something else? And, something else that's passed in. And, you know, as we've talked a lot on this podcast, a lot of people can get into trouble or, or maybe one of the hardest parts of, you know, stateful UI development is making sure you have a single source of truth for everything in your app. And when you have multiple sources of truth, that's when you get in trouble. And so much of React's design is meant to nudge and encourage us to make sure that we only have a single source of truth for things, because that's how we can get into trouble, right? Um, let's take the case without form inputs. Let's take a case where you're filtering a table, right? And you have tabs and you can filter it, um, by ascending or descending. Let's say you're looking at like a table in, um, an accounting software and you can sort your columns. So that starts off as every react developer knows how to do that. You click the header, you set sorting by, you know, uh, date ascending, date descending, you go to town. You're good to go. That's super easy. It's super fun to build with React. Then your product manager comes and says, we want the sorting to be in the URL. We want to be able to share this table. We, we want to be able to share this table. And share it. Exactly. And we want to be able to put it in the search params. So this is where a lot of people go down a bad road. And it's actually where this concept of controlled versus uncontrolled comes into play. So one, one thing you could do here is I have my table component. It has like the current sort as a piece of React state. And every time it changes, I need to make sure and push that up to the URL. So I have some sort of effect and I am call, like, I'm trying to synchronize the state of the URL with the state of my component. But, um, I have a video on this and we've talked a lot about this before. If you know, kind of the right answer, the right way to do this, it's really that, that first approach of trying to sync it, you're going to end up with all sorts of bugs because the user can click back and forward. They can put in their own search params into the URL. When you've moved something to the URL, it really is the URL that has become the source of truth. And your table needs to derive its sorting state from the state of the URL because we don't own the URL as programmers. That's something that is an input to our app. When you do it correctly and you move it to the URL, the buttons become links with a question mark 
and then the sort order is derived from the current search params, you've actually just changed an uncontrolled component into a controlled component. Your table had internal state. It had literally called a use state that was like the current sort order, and now it's getting it as a prop. And if you squint, that looks a lot like rendering an input tag with type text, having it have its own internal state, and then making it controlled by passing in value and on change, right? So it's really the same idea. It's having a single source of truth for every piece of UI, every piece of state in your UI. So, okay. So, um, uncontrolled means the source of truth is in internal. Yes. Controlled means, uh, I can control it. I mean, that's really, it's, I'm controlling the source of truth. Uh, it's usually like in, in state in the current component I'm working on, but maybe I'm reading from the URL as example, just you just gave, but I can like control it. I can transform it. I can like, I have like, I can like intercept it as it comes like in and out of the component. Um, it's, it's reactive in my app. Mm -hmm. Is it always one or the other? Is it, is every component I'm doing always controlled or uncontrolled or, or like, are there components that like are both controlled and uncontrolled? Like, I, but I, so like an input, I just want to give this example that with an input, I would think like, I'm always just defaulting to the browser or. I'm using like my own state and my own state setter, but there's never a world where like I have an if statement and I'm like flip flopping between the two. And, and yeah, so I just like, how do you, when do you think about that? And how do you think about this? And just great question. Said. Great question. And I love that. Cause that's exactly where I, I'm, I was going next in my mind. So, um, let's start with the, the, the last part of your comment, the input, you make it uncontrolled. So you just render it. It has its internal state. Or you make it controlled and you pass in value and on change. First of all, when it's controlled, it still has other internal state to it, doesn't it? Uh, where's the cursor position? You're passing in value and on change, but I can move my cursor position in the text with my arrow keys. It has to know where that is. That's that's still internal state. So this is something that's like a one like the first takeaway here. Components that are controlled mean that the important part of their interface is controlled. So the important part of, of, of an input is its value. Um, and so when you turn an input into a controlled input, you are controlling its value, but that doesn't mean that it can't have other state inside of it that it can use to make it like a good component or like a featureful component or just a better component to use. Um, so that's the first thing is that, um, Controlling it is really, again, it's about having a single source of truth. When you take ownership of the value, now the value is controlled. There's a single source of truth for the value, but they could still have their own internal state. They have a single source of truth for the cursor position. So that's kind of interesting. You can have, in that way, you can have components that have like some state that's internal and some uncontrolled, some state that's controlled. To the second point you made, can you flip flop, um, I actually think React throws an error if you try to do this, right? If you change it from being an uncontrolled to a controlled, um, you get an error. And um, in general, um, yeah, I actually don't know. I'd have to test it out if it's like, if you can do that with a single component instance, um, if you can just change it, you have value and on change basically be undefined. And then in a single render, they become something else. But I think that I don't think that lets you do that. I don't think it does in the past where I've run into this, where we have some like gnarly stuff on build UI where, where like you're in a checkout flow and then you sign in and you want to go like continue the checkout flow. And now all of a sudden, like we didn't know who you were and now we do know who you are. So the components, they switch between being locked and they get controlled and uncontrolled without getting mm -hmm. into details. But mm -hmm. anyway, I, I use a key. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm exactly. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, so. So I think, I think in, in general, regardless of like the specifics here, um, you want to think about your components as either being controlled or uncontrolled. And if you're swipping, swap, swapping between the two, it almost feels like you're back to that story with the query params that we told where you're trying to use the source of truth internal and you're trying to synchronize it. The React docs actually have a great paragraph on this, which we'll link in the show notes which is that basically it says to the effect of something to the effect of 
people sometimes try to make components that are both controlled and uncontrolled. Um, this is generally a bad idea and we recommend just going all in on controlled or all in on uncontrolled. And if you have something where you have to flip, then just use a key or render a different tree because now you're kind of fully in that world or fully in this world. Let's say you were building the sortable table and it doesn't use the URL. You want to be able to click the head the headers and um, change the sort order. And then you have a button that says share this. So you click share and then it puts them in the URL. It's almost like at that point you're flipping from uncontrolled to controlled. The source of truth is now the URL. And if you ever visit like a share page where the params come from there, that's like the source of truth for like the initial sort order, something like that. But you'd want to see either a key or two different like branches of logic in your app. Anyways, point being the React docs have a great point here. And again, they're trying to help people avoid this mistake that you get into sometimes where you try to have some internal state and then you try to sync it sometimes when you get new props in or something like that. It's best to just go either all controlled and all uncontrolled. And there's so many good examples that make this. Is, I know it's kind of an abstract conversation, which is why we're going to be making some YouTube videos about it. We want to talk a lot about different concrete examples in the course, but it really does come up a lot in React. Yeah. Okay. So you don't want to have components flip flop between controlled and uncontrolled, but sometimes like you want to change um, the default behavior. So let's say I do like a, a browser uh, color picker and I pass in a value like a hex value and then an on change. When I open up that color picker in the browser and then I just start like, you know how they give you like the rainbow gradient yep. thing and yep. I just start like clicking around it. I'm going to start firing my set states. Every time I click a new color, I'm going to, I'm going to call set state on color going to go set state and then that new state value is going to fold flow back into the input tag and update the color picker it's fully controlled component mm -hmm. but like let's say i'm like using that color is like a like a choose the theme of the website and so now every time they click like my whole website is changing colors and, and really what i want the behavior i want here is i want to be able to select a color I want the controlled component. I want to be able to like pass a color in a state and I want to be able to Because the source of state. truth is your theme, which maybe is yeah. like saved in a database. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I want, it's controlled. I want to control it, but I only want to like actually send out an update. I only want to set the state when you like dismiss the color picker or maybe even it's something. Yeah. Yeah. When you dismiss yep. the color picker, I think that's what yep. I want. Totally. So it's just kind of getting back to your earlier thing. Like, isn't this like changing from controlled to uncontrolled? So you get the, you know, you get the theme from your database, you pass it in. So it's controlled on change. You fire like a fetch request. And so, yeah, that's what we want to do. It's the source of truth for the color picker should be the theme of the website. Um, but now if you start dragging it around, <laughs> like every 16 milliseconds, you're firing off a fetch request to update the theme. Exactly. And you're like, well, you know, Sam and Ryan said I need to be either controlled or uncontrolled. So I guess that's right. Um, otherwise I have to make it uncontrolled, but then that's not, then I'm going to be doing this weird syncing thing where it has its own internal state for the current color, but the real source of truth is the database. So don't I need to write an effect to like up, you get all this mess. So how do you solve this? Well, um, this again is where this idea comes in where controlled and uncontrolled is really about the boundaries and what state you are choosing to delegate um, for being controlled by kind of the calling site. But that doesn't mean you can't have your own internal state that you can use and manage yourself, again, to make like your component more enjoyable to use, like more, more practical, more, more powerful and reusable. So let's say you wanted to make a color picker. How would you solve this uh, if the browser was like, snap your fingers? Maybe they have, they have value and on change, but then they have an option you can pass to input type color picker, which is, um, you know, only fire on dismiss. Yeah, it's like on so dismiss. only fire, only, only fire on dismiss. And then you get the change event. So what would that look like? Well, mm. you would click on the color picker, would open it up. You're moving it around and selecting a color. But if you clicked cancel, it would close and it would still be the current value. It would never fire like an on change. So then once, once the color picker closed, the current value in like a little indicator would just still show you what's in your database. But if you hit okay, you know, you actually choose a color. Now it fires an on change. You do your fetch request, it re-renders. So that's still controlled, even though there's so much state to this more sophisticated color picker that, that can be hidden inside the implementation 
but give you an interface that's useful. So you could do this yourself. This is not something that the browser offers like today, but you could make my own color picker. I could have my own state that I use to update it internally, like internal color. And I'm just setting that because I need to know kind of what it is as I'm dragging around. But now I'm gonna add something that says, once I hit escape or the user clicks outside of the area, I'm gonna fire an on change event myself, right? And I'm also gonna take in the current yep. color prop myself. So now you can imagine um, building this component, giving the, the caller an interface that's like value and like on commit, something like that, on color choose, something like that. And you could use all sorts of stuff. You could, you could say the, the, the user's still dragging the mouse cursor, so we don't wanna like call commit. They are still, their mouse is still over here. You could do something where like their mouse is off of the, the dialog for three seconds. Let's go ahead and commit the current color. Um, and if they hit escape, then, then you just, you just discard it. So that doesn't violate any of the kind of principles we've talked about because there's still a current, there's still a single source of truth kind of, this is kind of interesting. It's almost like while you're dragging the source well, of truth is internal. Yeah, but and then once you dismiss it, it becomes back to the props, you know. But in this example, you're talking about making Sam's color picker, right? And then I'm the user of Sam's color picker, exactly. So from my point of view, I, you've just given me Sam's color picker. It takes color and on commit, and so for for me, like that is the way I control it, and so right. I'm going to control it with my own color and state. But internally, you can have. All the state, all as much state as you want internal to that component. I never see it. And so it's kind of interesting because in this example, previously we were talking about going from like state to browser internal inputs that we have no access to. But now, now we're all in React, but it's really about whose point of view it is. Is it my point exactly. of view or is it your point of view with your internal Sam's color picker? So um Everything can still be in React state, but you can solve this notion of controlled and uncontrolled. Super well said. Um, if you look at some of the the components from things like libraries like Radix, you have like a drop down menu, and you get to pass in you know what happens when you click on it, what's or even what the selected menu list is. But those components are very sophisticated. They have a lot of internal state on their own, which is like, which is the active, which is the current. When you use a mouse cursor, they add data attributes to show which menu item is active. And they have all sorts of internal state to manage that. But from your perspective, once I take control, it's just a pure, pure controlled component. So again, really worth reading this part of the React docs, which we'll link, um, that talks about this idea of like, try to make sure that if you have internal state, but you are exposing props that's kind of a controlled interface, make sure that you revert to it when people are using it. There's some work here to basically clean up and make sure you are either using your internal state as a source of truth or what's being passed in. And if you're using what's being passed in, you need to make sure sometimes to react to changes to it, um, but keep your internal state in sync with it, which, which is kind of like can be a hard thing to do, but it's you're basically building like an input text area sort of thing, but it's just at the React component level. And it's still, it's so much easier when you understand this idea um, to pull this off because you understand either I'm supposed to be rendering from internal state or from props, basically. Um, so maybe this, we can wrap up with the, the example we've been working on with the with the sortable list because going through this whole um, like, understanding this working at the boundaries really helped me work with this resortable component from Framer Motion. So um, this is so cool. Framer Motion has a, um, a resort, is it called resort? Resortable? Reorder. 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 Reorder component. You can render reorder, you pass it items, you map over the items, you pass, you render a reorder dot item and you give it the item as well. And what it does is it uses layout animations to let you drag the items up and down the list. It uses object identity to know um, what the new order is and you know which one you're dragging and all that stuff, which is nice. You don't have to make up any like string keys or anything like that. It just uses the objects that you pass in in the array. And it gives you an on reorder callback, which you call which you use to call set state. 
So that's like how the component works. If you go to the docs, that's how you use it. So every time a, a, an item gets past another one, you get an on reorder callback and then you, you are supposed to call set state. You're kind of synchronously updating this state array and that's how it all works. So then and this you get would to be, this point. This would be a purely controlled component in this case? Well, well this is, it is, it, it is, it is controlled in the sense that that state needs to update for the thing to work. So I guess from the perspective of, of you right now, like when you're just following the very first guide using reorder, reorder is controlled because it doesn't have any internal state of its own. You have to pass in the items and you have to resort them when you get the on resort. So yes, reorder doesn't have internal state, at least related to the actual order. That's all up to you to, con to, to control yourself. And it's actually is interesting because I was thinking it would be great if they had a version that was uncontrolled. So you didn't have to do this the first time, right? You could imagine a version that's uncontrolled and that lets you just reorder it without doing anything to start. That's kind of how I would actually expect to see this component work from the beginning in the same way that you can use a Radix or a React Aria component. You can drop in tab list and tab items or, you know, radio group list or checkbox list. And you don't have to immediately call use state and send it in myself, right? So just a little, that's like a little uh, API design tip, I would say for folks who are either working on reusable components for their own companies and teams or libraries, the, the, the design from the, the HTML inputs in React is like the best onboarding experience because you can just drop in an input and it works. And then you're like, oh, I need to get the value out of there. How do I control it? That's the motivation for making it controlled, right? Yeah, great. Anyway, great. little tangent there. Um, so this is how, this is the only way to use it though. Basically you use it as a controlled component. You have this state with these items. Then of course, um, you want to actually do something. You wanna like trigger a side effect. So like, let's say we're making like a clone of the reminders app on iPhone. And so the order comes from the database. If you reorder it, you wanna save it. So when you refresh, the order is still there. So what do you do? Well on reorder, you still need to set that state immediately for like the UI to be responsive, but then you send a fetch request out and you update things. And so what's happening? Like, um, when the order comes back, let's say it fails. So what's the source of truth for the order? And this is wh where it gets very confusing. And I've helped a lot of people with this component. And if you look in the issues, there's a lot of confusion because you're telling me I need to use local state to control it, but the source of truth isn't always local state. I can, Sometimes the, the source way, of truth is my database. I can think of three sources of truth in your example. So the first source of truth is while you're dragging it, like literally while you're dragging it, you haven't released it. While you're dragging, you're moving the bottom item up to the top. Something is like rendering those pixels. There's some React code that's rendering the, the XY of that bottom item now up at the top. So there's some state that owns that. Then you let go and you drop the top item, the bottom item on the top. And um, th now there's like the client side local state you need to deal with because you, you want to keep that, that bottom item on the top now. Uh, and then there's a fetch request that goes out that goes to update your database. And so that's like the third piece of state is, is your database. It's literally perfect. I don't know I which mean, that's, one. That's, that's... I don't know, by the way, I don't know which <laughs> one you're supposed to use. Because when you tell me about like a table, with the filter options, it's very clear to me that those should be in the URL. As soon as someone asks, they say, we wanna share this. It's very clear to me that should go in the URL. That's the source of truth and it should all like flow down. There's also like this nice like visual I get of like data flowing down and like the URL is, is like, we think of as like most top level thing. Totally. But man, with this with this sort thing, I don't, I don't know because while you're dragging, the most important thing is is like your mouse position. And then while you drop it, and after you've like fired the fetch request, the most important thing is what's in the database. It was, but I don't, anyway, yeah, just. No, that, I think that was like literally the, my thought process and it was perfectly said because you basically identified, yeah, this thing lives in three different states. Just like we talked about um, several episodes ago with Optimistic, how when your form is in a pending state and you wanna show Optimistic, the source of truth flips from the server to the client. It's kind of a similar thing going on here, right? Um, when your app is in a pending state and you're using Optimistic, 
the source of truth is the client because the client knows more than the server. Once the app is settled, the server knows more than the client. The source of truth should be the database. And you just identified a third thing, which is basically when you're dragging it, um, it's like where my mouse is. And uh, that state could be changing. Like what should happen? No, like you, you can never imagine like clicking and dragging something on an iPhone app like a native Apple iPhone app. And then like everything just changes out from under yeah, you while you yeah. have something you're dragging. Right. So the source of truth is definitely like the drag, you know, um, in that sense, it's like the internal state. It doesn't matter what you passed into this thing. It doesn't matter what's in the database. When I'm dragging this, this, this baby is uncontrolled, like to the max, like this is the priority for the UI. It is the drag and where my mouse is. It's uncontrolled because n n nothing I pass into it while I'm dragging it gets to overwrite it or reset it. Exactly. Exactly. And I could be dragging it. I could drag one to three. And if I, if you looked, if we just took a snapshot of the program, the data that I'm passing in is going to say one, two, three, but the, the UI shows, you know, three, two, one. And so the source of truth, um, I can just look at that snapshot of the program and say, yeah, this is not controlled. Like you're passing in things and the UI doesn't agree. So that's, it's uncontrolled. It's rendering from internal state. Then you let go, you set state. So there's this boundary there where when you set the items, that becomes a source of truth. But then your app is in a pending state. And uh, once it's settled, you want the source of truth to kind of revert back to the database. So, um, Maybe we can get into more details next time, but I'm going to have a YouTube video on this and maybe a blog post as well. We have to wrap up here pretty soon. But the solution is, is exactly the way you laid it out. Help me think, okay, I need to make a new component boundary here that lets me drag. And it knows if I'm dragging. And if I'm dragging, then I'm going to be rendering from internal items. As soon as I let go, I'm going to defer back to what the caller is passing in. So that's exactly what I did. I made a new component boundary. I passed in items as props, but then internal to this sortable list, I have internal items that it can use to render from during interactions while dragging is true. But as soon as I let go and dragging is false, I want to revert back to items, not internal items, while also sending an on reorder change event. So I do that. You sent the on reorder change. And now the parent. If the parent is controlling it with local state, well, that's going to work just fine. If the parent sends a fetch request, then the current items from the database are going to be stale. So it's actually really funny when you do this because you get this nice animation with frame of motion, you drag this item, you let go, and it just goes right back to <laughs> where it started. And you're like, what the heck? But that's actually a great uh, little checkpoint to make sure that you built a controlled component. It's controlled because the part, the important part of the interface you're exposing is still being controlled by the outside. Just like the data picker, if you dismiss it, or the, sorry, the color picker that we talked about, if you dismiss it, um, it's gonna revert back to the current value that's being passed in, right? So that mm. all works, you let go, and it's like, oh, well, I'm controlled, so I need to go back here. And then once the fetch request comes in, then it just goes, bloop, because now it's saved, and it's still controlled. And then, the icing on the cake here, which is so freaking cool, is if you're using React 19, you can use Optimistic, and now the caller can say, well, my source of truth is the server, the database records, but I'm gonna trigger an action uh, on reorder. I'm gonna go ahead and update the position, but I'm gonna use Optimistic to optimistically update the order to what I think, expect it's gonna be, and then your your sortable list just works without you even doing anything because the source of truth is optimistically updated and it's respecting that that's fine and um while the app is pending it's using that and then once everything is revalidated and the app settles now it just renders from the new params the new props coming in from the server and it's the same thing so nothing happens or it errors and then the the list goes back and you didn't have to do any of that so this is like such a good, this whole flow is such a, a good test of your knowledge and understanding of component boundaries, when things should be controlled versus uncontrolled, um, and uh, how to move the source of truth between in inside a boundary, outside a boundary, or even on client and server with use optimistic. And if you, if you get these boundaries right, you just, you do not have to do any sort of cleanup. You do not have to have any sort of like yeah. cleaning up state. Um, everyone who uses a sortable list should never have to think about that. And just like you don't, when you use an input 
you know, that's how it should feel. Yep. You know, it's really interesting that, um, when you want to go between these worlds, the idea is you make a new component, you make yes. a new component and yes. it has internal state. And yes. we often don't think of, we often don't, it's very hard when you're a developer, when you're writing code to think about like, am I the consumer of this API or am I the author of this API? But it's really, you're, you're wearing two different hats. One of you is yes. wearing the library developer hat and the other is wearing like the app developer hat. And um, yeah, it's so powerful because as you just showed so with powerful. that, with that that sortable list, how you can go between those three states, uh, and what you ended up with, what you ended up with was was it's what is it? It's like two components, right? There's like sortable group, and then you have a sortable item, and it just it just works. It just works. It works as easy as an input, you know. And if you've yeah. ever worked, if you've ever tried to share components that get like stale state, or you start adding use effects to like try to clean things up and it's like there's another boundary that's being missed here or you're trying to mix controlled and uncontrolled really the steps here are like find the boundaries find what the source of truth is for each piece of state make sure it can be both uncontrolled Th this was like the key for me when writing this um is that i wanted to make sure that i could use it as a fully uh fully controlled component first where it respected the state and then fully uncontrolled and then figure out that it's either one or the other. So in the same way, you can't pass value without on change. You can't pass items without on reorder if you want it to do anything. Mm. Right. And that was like such a key part of writing this component for me. And once I did, it was just like, it all fell into place. It was really cool. So yeah, the, the boundaries that we needed to create just immediately made themselves clear like all the yes. components and what props they should take and yes yeah. um i think like i think you, i just want to end with how do you know when like you have this problem or, or how do you know when you're running into it and i think that two times especially with this this sortable list that we were doing um it came up as like if you ever have effects that are trying to like observe state and then set some other state that's like a Man, that's a sign of not just in like this controlled, uncontrolled world, but that's just a sign that like you're you're gonna be you're fighting react. Th there yeah, is an easier way react. to do yeah. what you're doing. If a hundred percent agree, if you have an effect and all it has is some like if else, checking some logic, calculating some derived state, and then calling like set set so initial state. user ID to something that's based on the data coming back, you're fighting the React model, and it's, you're you're basically like. Um, you're duplicating state somehow you haven't really figured out where but if you duplicate state you don't have a single source of truth this is where you get flickers this is where you get weird re-renders and bugs um so yeah that's a and, de definitely a great one and then yeah usually you can think of this as in control versus uncontrolled to yes. help you find the answer absolutely the, the other one too is if you're ever in a spot where you have some internal state in your component but then you want to like think about Oh, what happens if my component receives new props? Uh, and this happens. I mean, this happens to every React app I work on. Yes. And a lot of times, like you're just you just want to think, like you just think in React, like oh, I'm going to drop an effect in, and I'm going to watch the props, and that's how I'm going to react to new props. Um, but this is, I think, in your example with the sortable list, you have to deal with this, and the solution that you came up with is really nice, and you didn't have to use an effect. Exactly, and you and and part of that solution, like you said when we were pairing on this yesterday was making a new component boundary so that it can re-render, it can work. There's no It can effect. have its own internal state. It can have its own internal state that is separate. And there still is like what you said, if, you, if I have new props coming in, well, if you're making a controlled version, you are gonna need to respond to that. So there is some points of tension where you're like, well, I have internal state that's kind of like seated with the props and now I'm able to do my own logic, like updating the order. But if the props change, I do want to respect that because I want to be able to make a controlled version. And um, in these rare cases where you have something like that, where you really have to duplicate state, there's a part of the React guides that talk about updating state in render. This is kind of the way you would do it without using an effect. And it's better for a, a lot of reasons, um, but the component boundary is an important part of that. But you can set state during render if, as long as it terminates, it's like a, a single condition. We'll link that part in the docs too, because it's very interesting. But the last thing I wanted to say from what you were saying, which is um, this idea of like the props are changing. I want some effects. I basically want to derive these things from the props. 
uh, listeners might remember get derived state from props, which basically was um, a hook in class components that was used to kind of solve this problem. And there's no real analog uh, with hooks and function components because it's not really the right way to think about it. Uh, get derived state from props, even in the name, sounds like you're trying to mix controlled and uncontrolled, right? Props yeah. means I'm controlled. Internal state means I'm uncontrolled. So uh, you don't really want to get derived state from props, even conceptually. Um, it's more like sometimes you need to do a reset. Um, but uh, if you've ever seen, if you ever come across get derived state from props, a lot of people are like, how do I do this with hooks or in React today? Um, usually you just want a new barrier and you want to either be fully controlled or fully uncontrolled and that will solve your problems like 90% of the time. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yep. Um, awesome. So obviously a lot more to say there. There's so many cool examples, but I think the main takeaways here are like the main lessons I would, I would say for, for listeners is like always make sure there's a single source of truth for everything in your UI. If it feels like, um, you are doing things like running effects or writing some code that needs to update this guy's state when these things change and they come in differently. It's like really two pieces of state. So you're duplicating things. You wanna just try to derive everything whenever you can. Um, and then just this idea that controlled versus uncontrolled, thinking very explicitly about, and is the source of truth my internal stuff or is it the external stuff um, can help solve a lot of problems that you probably run into if you've had things kind of be sometimes they work there's flickers they re-render stale with stale data um this controlled versus uncontrolled stuff is, is very useful and it's it's a lot more applicable than you might think if you just come across a term in a blog post so yes um yeah cool that was fun a lot of a lot of more stuff to talk about there we'll see where we go next week but um if you want to keep up with our progress on our course we'll put a link in the description to advanced react component patterns it's on build ui's courses page and um so that we'll we'll put a link there otherwise if you have any questions um email us at sam at buildui.com or ryan at buildui.com or hit us up on twitter at front and first fm um i think that's it yeah yeah awesome great episode yeah thanks for listening everyone and uh we'll catch you next week see ya bye